All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is the um, second video for this uh, unit on Newton's laws and forces. So we talked a little bit about what forces are last uh, video. And um, now we're going to bring in this, this, the start of this idea of Newton's laws of motion. So uh, Sir Isaac Newton was the person to kind of first put into um, lay out the theory of how um, motion works with respect to forces. Um, so um, Newton has it came up with three laws. And the first law, you may have actually even heard this before, it basically says an object in motion will stay in motion and an object at rest will stay at rest unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. So um, basically, this is can all be summarized, uh, that matter, things, it are lazy. So if I use as an example, so um, you know, previously people thought that you know, if you push something, if you push something it might move, but nothing really wants to keep moving. Like this box, I can push on it, but when it gets the chance, it's just gonna stop moving. So they assumed that matter, all matter just kind of wanted to be at rest. And what Newton said, came along and said, well, no, actually, that's not the case. Um, this box could keep on moving. Um, it's just that it's being stopped by something. If that thing wasn't there, then this wouldn't work. And so what he recognizes is that when you push on a box here, there's a, a friction force that pu pushes against you. If you want to get that box moving, you need to overcome that. So if I push with more force, an unbalanced force, it'll start to move. If I stop pushing, then this friction force might slowly bring this back to stop because now the friction force is the thing that's unbalanced. And of course, once it's stopped moving, it's not going to start moving for no reason. So if we could be in a situation where there was no friction whatsoever, um, objects at rest will stay at rest. This isn't going to move. But if I give it a little push, all I would have to do is give it like a little gentle nudge. If I now stop pushing it, this cart will just kind of roll on forever. If there's no friction to stop it, no air resistance, no sliding friction, then this will go on forever. And that's Newton's first law. Objects in motion will stay in motion. Objects at rest will stay at rest. If I want this to stop, I have to come along and exert a force in the opposite direction that's going to stop it from moving. And that's the only way that can, that can work. So, um, so um, this is often referred to as the law of inertia. And inertia, the inertia of an object, is basically just the tendency for matter to keep doing what it's doing. And by that I mean if something is not moving, the amount of inertia it has will tell you how hard it's going to be to start it moving. And if it is moving, the amount of inertia it has will tell you how hard it is to stop it from moving. Um, really, if you think about it, the amount of inertia that an object has really tells you about the mass of that object. Um, if I throw a baseball at you, not a lot of an inertia, so it's pretty easy for me to throw it at you and pretty easy for you to catch. If I could somehow throw a bowling ball at you, um, it would be really hard for me to get it going to throw it. But man, if I could get it going, then when you tried to catch it, it would have a lot of inertia that you'd have to overcome in order to stop it. So the mass of an object tells us how hard it is to start something moving or to slow it down and stop it. And so you for sure have experienced inertia in different situations in everyday life. Imagine if you're at a uh, go-kart track. So imagine you're racing around a go-kart track. There's all sorts of things you got to do as you do that. There's kind of three situations. There's three times when you would really notice your inertia. When you would really notice that there is a force that has to work to, uh, to move you. Um, the first time that you might notice this is when you start. So starting up, you can imagine that if you're sitting in your go-kart, when you hit the gas, when you go to start up, it actually feels like you are being pushed back in your seat. Now there is no magical force 
that waits for somebody to hit the gas in their car that comes along and pushes them back into their seat, what's actually happening is the whole car is trying to go forward. The go-kart wants to go forward. You just have all this inertia and you don't want to go with it. It's going to have to exert an unbalanced force on you. So that feeling of you going backwards is actually the cart trying to move forwards and bring you along for the ride. Now the other time you would notice this for sure would be stopping. So you probably, when you do a go-kart race, you probably are like me and you never use the brakes. But if you did, if you jammed on the brakes at any point, well, you, what you would notice is that you would kind of keep carrying forward. Your inertia would want to keep going. If you're driving in a car, you've got all this inertia in the forwards direction. When you hit the brakes, the car stops, but you want to keep on going. You want to keep on doing what you're doing. And so you're going to keep going forward. But luckily, you've got a seat belt and you're holding on to the steering wheel, and those will exert a force on you that will keep you from carrying forward. They'll kind of stop that inertia from carrying you forward. And the last one, which you might notice, would be when you turn. So anytime you're turning, when you are racing down the track and you need to make a turn, it kind of feels like you might slide out of your seat to the side. Now again, there's no magical force that comes along and pushes you to the side when your car turns. That's not it at all. The car turns around the corner. The car now wants to go in another direction. You're the one that wants to keep going in a straight line. So your inertia wants to just carry you forward. It's the car that turns. And luckily, because of your seatbelt and everything else, you get pulled around the corner as well. Now if you think about it, these three situations are all examples of something happening. Whether you're starting up and going faster, hitting the brakes and slowing down, or turning around a corner, what's changing in each of those cases is your velocity. So uh, these things changing all represent accelerations. And so we're going to talk about that next unit, about how does the acceleration weigh into things. But for now, let's just think about the fact that if you want something to move, um, it's going to take a force to move it, and it'll just keep on moving until another force brings it to a stop. So another way of thinking about Newton's first law uh, is that basically velocities will stay constant. So if something has a velocity, it will stay at that constant velocity unless another force comes in and changes it. And that could include a velocity of zero. If something's not moving, it's not just going to start moving unless there's some force that's going to get it moving along. So we've got two very, very complicated examples here. So a, a, a book sitting on a table. So imagine we've got a book sitting on a table. Let's think about all the forces that are working on this book. So I've got, um, here's my book. Yeah, that looks good. Now, if I were to draw the forces that are on it, uh, I've got a force of gravity which pulls down. And this is something we're gonna do. We're gonna draw diagrams, as we always do in physics, and we're gonna draw and label all the forces so we can really kind of understand what's happening. Okay, and we'll talk more about this in an upcoming video. But for now, I've got gravity pulling down on the book. Um, I, I can I get a sense that if this was a really weak table and it couldn't even hold a book, then maybe the whole table would collapse and the book would actually get pulled down. But since that's not happening, since that book doesn't fall down to the ground, there must be something else at work here. And so there must be some other force that is upwards. And we would call this Fn for normal force. Now we talked about gravity. We know gravity pulls matter together. So the gravity pulling the book down is being pulled by the earth and they're trying to attract towards one another. Um, normal force is a new force and so what this is is this is really a supporting force and this happens anytime Anytime some structural thing provides support. So you're sitting in a chair, perhaps, that chair is pushing up on you so that gravity can't pull you down. The table pushes up on the book so it doesn't fall down. If you lean against a wall, the wall pushes back on you, otherwise you would just fall through the wall. So the thing to notice about normal force is that it is always perpendicular to the surface. Now what I mean by that is, the table is flat, and so the normal force is straight up. That seems pretty simple. But if the table was like on an incline, if the table was angled, then the normal force would always push up. It would always push perpendicular to the surface of that table. So in this case, what's gonna happen? Well, the normal force pulling down, uh, oh, sorry, the force of gravity pulling down, and the normal force pushing up, they would be equal and opposite. So these forces are balanced. 
And if there's balanced forces, then that means no acceleration. Okay. If we compare that to an example where you take that same book and you just drop it off the table, then I would have the book falling, gravity pulling down, and there is nothing else working against that. This is what we mean by unbalanced forces. Unbalanced forces. And so the gravity pulling down isn't being stopped by anything, and so what's going to happen is this is going to accelerate. Okay, so when forces are balanced, then things just either keep doing what they're doing, they're moving or they're not moving, but they stay the same. And so um, there's three examples here I want you to think about. We're going to discuss these in class, but these are all good examples of when Newton's first law would like really come into play. So if you've ever been on a skateboard or a scooter or anything like that, you might know that you could be just kind of cruising along the street not worry about anything. If a little tiny rock gets jammed in your wheels, if the skateboard stops, it's not a very fun experience for you. So how does that relate to Newton's first law? Um, the second one is a personal favorite of mine. You may have played this game as a child. Uh, if you're sitting in the back seat with maybe another sibling sitting next to you, when you go around the corner, it certainly feels like you don't want to, but it feels like you're being forced to slide across your seat and smush them into the opposing door. And so how is that related to this idea of inertia? And last but not least, think about headrests. So in a car, we have headrests, and those are actually to prevent injury, not from a head-on collision, but actually from a rear-end collision where one car hits you from behind. And think about how does that headrest prevent you from getting whiplash. Okay, we'll go over those examples in class. Okay, so that's it for Newton's first law.